right, that's right. I am here once again with another Lockout Men podcast interview for you guys. Welcome to the Lockout Men podcast show. I am your host, Lockout Men. And today I have a special guest that came on. I found this gentleman by way of a, of a Facebook group. He had an issue that he would like to come on and talk about. Well, the issue, the issue has passed, but still, uh, it's 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 a it's a disrespectful issue in 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 the sense of the word. And I'll I'll let him come on and uh, and explain to you guys uh, what happened. Uh, this gentleman is a 30 year driver. He been in these streets for 30 years, three decades. You guys hear what I'm saying? Three decades of driving. I'm sure this gentleman has seen it all. I mean, if he haven't seen it all, if he haven't seen most of it, I'm sure, <laughs> I'm sure he has seen it all. I would like to welcome to the show, James LaPlante. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Thank you, thank you. How many miles you occurred out here, man? Uh, roughly a uh, little over three million, probably. Three million. Now, let me ask you this. Is that Maybe a little more? Is that is that three million with with one particular company or three million in your lifetime? In my lifetime, I, I'm, I'm third generation. Uh, I grew up in this business. Uh, my real father uh, owns a bunch of moving companies, um, so I grew up in the business. My grandfather drove. My great grandfather drove. Man, this. So. So yeah, I've been around it my whole life. So this is generations deep, man. Man. Generations deep, yes, sir. Man. So 30 years, man. So let me ask you this. Did you did you start in a cab over or was it or, or was it a regular regular cab that you started in? Or was the, the, it or was it a the day first, cab? The, the, it, no, it was a uh it was a sleeper truck. The first truck that I drove on my first run. It was a 1967 Mack conventional with what they call suicide shifter. It has two shifters. Um, it, it was no power steering, no power brakes back then. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I've come a long way. Man. Trucks, you know. Uh, Talk. But speaking of cab overs, I, I do own one. Um, I got a 72 Peter built. That's a toy at my house. Okay. I have driven them. I love them. Um, some of the drivers today wouldn't know what to even do with a cab over. I'm um, I'm sure driving on top of a motor. How how was how was that driving? I mean driving that because the cab over don't even have no don't have nowhere to sleep. How, how no no they got they got bunks. You, you got to climb over what they call the dog box and, and climb into the sleeper. You just can't you know can't get up and walk in like these new trucks. You uh, you get up, you climb over the dog box, and you get into a tiny little shell of, of a bed. You can lay in the bed and put your hand up and, and reach the roof. Is that comfortable? <laughs> that had to be uncomfortable. I, I don't mind it. You know, I, I, I'm old school. You know, I don't play video games and, and all that. You know, when when I'm done driving, you know, I, I go to sleep, get my rest, and that way, when I when I can drive, I can drive. So, Man, so the to me, I don't mind, it don't mind me. So let me ask you this: back in the day, there was no amenities, none. I, I, I'm going to assume that there was none. I'm not even sure if there was a power inverter invented back. I mean, back then, was it? No, um, no, not when I first started. You know, we we didn't have all the amenities that we got now: the refrigerators, microwave, inverters, TVs. Didn't have any of that. You just drove your truck, you know, back in the day, you run your two, three log books, run as long as you want, go to sleep, just make sure your log books were half, halfway correct, just make sure you didn't hand the DOT officer the wrong log book. 
<laughs> you say the it, it's come a long way. <laughs> it's just come a long way from uh from them days. You say make sure you don't give them the wrong law book, huh? <laughs> yes, sir. Oh man. Just make sure you don't hand them the the daytime when you when when you're in daytime, you know, you gotta make sure you give them the right one. Man, thirty thirty years ago it I mean, life was so different for a truck driver thirty years ago, man. You you came it, it, it was. Oh go ahead. Go ahead. You you was about to say something else. Oh I, I was just saying it, it does. It, you know, it, it's changed a lot. Man. So back then tell me how tell me how was life how was life like as a truck driver thirty years ago? Man, back 30 years ago, it was awesome. I'm not going to even lie to you. I'm a straightforward guy. Um, it was awesome. It was a brotherhood, sisterhood. You know, the drivers looked out for one another. It wasn't all for themselves. And, you know, it was a lot of common courtesy. You know, people talked on the TV about, you know, you know, we, we told stories about how many women we've had or how many miles we've driven or how fast the trucks can go. You know, it, it was good conversations back in the day, you know. Um, it was a it was a brotherhood, a tight. You know, the truck drivers looked out for the other truck drivers constantly. You know, I wish that would come back because today's generation just it's not uh, there. They've lost track of that. It's not there. It's not there in today's generation. It's not there no more. You know, I mean, you still got some. You know that that has a brotherhood. You know, um, but a, a lot of people, you know, they're just in it for the almighty buck and in it for themselves. And you know, a, a lot of these drivers. They don't even own CDs anymore. You know, back then we didn't have cell phones and everything. Our, our means of communication was talk on the TV to each other. And when we got to the mom and pop truck stops for our home cooked meal, you know, they had little dial phones right there on, on the tables that you could call your family and you call them collect or buy your little phone card. Yeah, I'm that old. Um, it, it, it was it was awesome back then. It was a real. It was it. Was, I loved it. You know, I still love it. You know, to be out here, I, I still love it. I don't like some of the ways and some of the rules today, but hey, I still love what I do, and that's why I do it. Back back then, you you mentioned you you mentioned phones and everything. So take us through take us through a daily uh uh thirty years ago. Take us through. A daily from when you wake up you get the how, how did how did you get the load and and would and how did you go throughout the day of getting that load to where it needs to go well back in the day when i first started you know uh you, you would talk to your, your your dispatcher at your company that you were at how um, now? How how did you talk? You, how did you talk to your dispatcher? Uh, you would have to stop and use a payphone. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't have the amenity to call from your truck, and there wasn't no computer to get your dispatch info. You you would stop. You know, you'd park, stop at a truck stop or wherever you're parked, and go go to a payphone, um, call in. Uh, most of them had the 800 numbers. You know, the companies, and, and you call in, and they, you'd write it down on a little tablet. You know where you're going and the company name and phone number and stuff like that. And then you'd sit down in your truck with an atlas. Yep, I said atlas. I'm that old. And you would look at that atlas and you plan your own route and, and make sure that it was a truck route and, and see where your scale houses were. And, you know, if you were overweight, you, you know, you had to make sure you bypassed that scale house so you didn't get in trouble. Uh, you just sit down with your atlas and then you just take notes, you know, and, just stick it up on your dash somewhere or have it handy where you could grab it and say, all right, I'm supposed to take this route right here. Mm -hmm. you, you just go on about your business. There, there wasn't no GPS to tell you turn left, turn right, uh, get on this. I mean, you had to do all that yourself back then. Um, and then when you got wherever you're going, you, you you know, get out, you go in, you check in. Then, of course, when you're done, you go find you a pay phone somewhere and call in and let your dispatch know that you were done and let them know what you did. Man, technology technology today has changed all of that for you guys. Um, man, I, how difficult it was to 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 find a payphone back then. Uh, back in the day, it wasn't that hard. Um, depending on what what business you were in, what you were hauling. Uh, back in my younger days, when you know when I was, you know, 
in good shape, you know, not so old. Uh, I, I did a lot of what they call bed bugging, you know, fur, uh, furniture moving. Mm-hmm. So, you know, when I got done, normally I would use the phone, you know, at the customer, the customer's house or whatever, you know, because I was moving people. Um, so for me, it was a little bit easier, you know, because I was in the moving business. When I got done at the moving company or whatever, where I was at, you know, I'd just go in and use their their phone. Okay. Um, but some of the other drivers, you know, they would they would have to find a truck stop to stop at or, you know, find a way, you know, a place along the road to stop and go. And back then, you know, they had pay phones. These kids today don't know anything about that, but they would have pay phones on almost every corner. So you'd have pay phones sitting in front of the stores and shopping centers, and you had them next to the bus stops. You had them on the corners so you could stop and make a phone call. So how was how was the trust stop? You know, how, how was the trust stops back in the day? Now was there was there many or now now we got like the the the, the majors, you know, the the pilots, the petros, loves, and so forth and so on. But they 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 weren't as many as they are today. But the truck stop quality was so much better, man. It was more friendly, you know. The mom, the mom and pop truck stops, you know, the good food. You know, the sitting down, you know, drivers would sit around a big U-shaped area and you'd have 15, 20 drivers in there just having good conversations, drinking coffee, you know, um, having a good home-cooked meal. Man, they used to put them on big old plates. You, you, trust me, when you ordered a breakfast, you, you had enough for two people if you wanted. And, and, you know, a lot of those drivers, not me, of course, I'm, I'm still small, but a lot of the drivers, you know, they got big for a reason. That, that truck's not food. <laughs> it, 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 was, it was good back then. Um, you, you didn't have all that McDonald's and hard, all that nasty, you know, uh, what, what do you process food and all that? It was home cooked food back then. Mm -hmm. Um, and good conversations with a lot of drivers, you know, and, uh, you know, that's how you found out a lot of stuff too in areas, you know, by word of mouth, you know, drivers talking in the truck stop, stuff like that, you know, um, hell back then showers was two, three dollars, you know, pay your two, three dollars or if you got fuel. You know, your coffee was free and the shower was free, you know. Um, It it was a lot better than back then, you know, uh, versus today, in in my opinion. And, you know, um, that's just my opinion. Now, the fueling fueling back then, was it it double-sided as it is today or was it just one pump? And then you had to get turn the truck around and then pump the other side, too. How how was fueling back then? Um, uh, back then, if you went to the wrong fuel stop, you had to, you know, reach the hoses across the truck. Um, back then, the hoses were a little bit longer. You'd have to turn them around. But um, sometimes you would have to use one hose for both tanks and just stretch it across the back of the truck. Um, but they still, you know, some, they still, some of them did have two, two hoses. So, and then, you know, back then, you know, of course, you, you had to use uh, con- uh, what they had com checks back then mm-hmm. um, or carry. A lot of times you carry cash, you know. Um, when I would go out, you know, the job would give me enough cash to pay for my fuel and, and expenses and stuff like that. And you just brought back the receipts and turned the cash back in how, that you didn't use. How was, uh, oh, man, 30 years, man. So much has changed uh, back then. Um, how was how was uh, like how was safety for you guys back then? Like you know, I'm I'm hoping you didn't incur uh, any no situations throughout your 30 year career. But how was how was safety for you guys? How did you guys make sure that that you were safe and and that the that the product was safe. Um, uh, kind of similar to today. I mean, you use locks. Um, we didn't have a lot of the issues back then, man. Um, people didn't really bother us. I mean, you, you of course you had your pirates back then that would try to hijack the clothes every once in a while. You know, it was far and few between. But for the most part, man, it, it was safe. You know, people back then you didn't have all the rules and regulations so to speak, you know, um, you, you could protect yourself without any issues. You know, you, you, I, I've always carried a gun. I mean, I can't do it now, but I, I've always carried protection, you know, to, to, I, I've got a motto, you know, um, I'm going home to my family. Right. Simple. 
how I'm going. I'm going home to my family. Uh, so that that's just me. Uh, it, it wasn't that bad as far as having to protect yourself. It's not not like today, you know. Especially with everything going on in the world today, with you know, it, it's just crazy. Just crazy. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. How was the money? What what was the money like back uh, then? Man, money was money was good back then. Um, it, it it was a lot better than what it is today. I, I'm not gonna lie to you. Uh, back in the '80s, I, you know, I, I was bringing in, in six figures a year. Um, easy. Um, now you mentioned. It, hold up, you but, said now you mentioned six figures. So, how was that? Was did did you have all your? Did you have all? Well, back then. Back then, was endorsements was uh was a was a was a thing back then, or once you got your CDLs, uh you you pretty much could drive anything. Back then, it wasn't even called a CDL. When I got my license, matter of fact, I, I, I've never even took a CDL test. Um, what what they call a CDL test today? Mm-hmm. Um, I've never took one. I grandfathered in. Um, when I got my license in Tampa, Florida. Um, I was 17 years old. It was called a chauffeur's license with a couple endorsements on it. Um, it, was, it was called a Class E chauffeur's license. Okay, okay. So I, I, I grandfathered in. Um, uh, I want to say, if, if I remember correctly, I want to say I grandfathered in in early 96 mm-hmm. to, to the CDL. Where it was the class A CDL. Did you have to? Did you have to retake? I want to say that was ninety five, ninety six. Did you have to retake the test again, or you just they just? Oh, I, I didn't have to do anything. I just went in and and you know I, I got their what they call DOT certificate card, you know, for your health, and I just had to show that. Just grandfathered in. They just you know carried me over. So I watch a lot of I, I watch a lot of trucking movies. Um, you know, Smokey and the Bandit, Convoy, all all them good movies of the past. Was oh, come life on now. Come on now. was life as a truck driver as portrayed in the movies? Is is the reality close to what they portrayed in the movies for truck drivers back in the day? In, in, in some aspects, yes. In, in some aspects, no. About half and half, I would say. You know. um, you know, I, I do know of guys that did have, you know, I, I got some friends of mine that was in this before I was, and they used to run produce, man, and, and they used to have a car that would run in front of them just to let them know what was coming up um, because then them boys rode out old school. Okay. Um, I would say half and half. All right, all right. That's what's up. Six figures, 30 years. All right, man. So let's, let's get into the uh... – Let's let's get into the situation. So, you was at the what was that? A Petro Pilot Petro. Uh, Petro Rafting, Virginia. All right. Uh, let let us know what 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 went down over there. So I, I'm a night driver, and uh, I, I like to run nothing but night, less traffic, less aggravation, less four wheels. Well, um. I, I have a service dog, you know. Um, I've, I've had a rough childhood, um, and uh, I have had some things happen to me in my life. So I've got anxiety and PTSD pretty pretty bad. Mm-hmm. Um, but I can still do my job, you know. I don't want to kill nobody or anything like that. I still love what I do. And matter of fact, you know, if, if you got anxiety or PTSD, this is one of the perfect jobs for you because you're by yourself mm-hmm. and you don't have people bothering you so much. Anyway, I have a service dog, and she goes she goes everywhere with me because I, I don't do crowds at all. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I take her in. You know, if a truck stop is really busy and really crowded and stuff, I normally take her in because she's trained to take my mind when she when she sees the tense and, and anxiety. Um, she 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 is trained, professionally trained, um, to take the attention um, off of. That she she starts tugging on the leash and she tries to pull my attention away from it, right? Um, to make it more pleasurable in the store. And uh, so anyway, I, I was went in to get a cup of coffee. Um, it was afternoon, 
And uh, I walked in and got a cup of coffee, and uh, I was walking up to the register. And there was this woman that was there, and she, and she turned around and she looked at me and she said, can't you, can't you read? She said, there's no pets allowed. And uh, and I wanted to look at her and say something, but I didn't. I, I wanted to ask her, can she read that it's a right. service dog? Right. It's got a vest and a card on, on her. And, uh, but I, I didn't say anything. I, I just, and she just shook her head at me and I just, I, I blew it off mm -hmm. then. And, uh, she gave me some dirty looks and everything. And, uh, so I, I just blew that one off. So I, I, I was next in line. I was paying for my coffee and I'm, I'm sitting there and I, of course my dog's sitting next to me. She's really trained. So she's, whenever I go up to the register and I pull on the leash one time, she sits down. Mm -hmm. And, uh, so I was trying to pay for my coffee, and this guy comes up and just starts touching my dog. Uh, and, uh, out of the blue. Just... And I told him, I, just out of the blue, didn't ask nothing. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I, I, said, I, I said, sir, please don't touch my dog. But fuck you, if you didn't want that thing petted, you should take that thing and leave it in the damn truck. He got a nasty attitude. What? And, you know, here's the thing. You know, if somebody walked up to me and says, you got a beautiful dog, may I pet her? That's I will say, yes, her name is Bella. Right. Because my dog is trained not to go to anybody unless they know her name. Mm-hmm. So with that being said, if somebody walked up and says, hey, can I please pet your dog? If it's not a busy area and this, that, and the other, and I'm, I'm, I'm relaxed a little bit, I will tell them, yeah, go shoot her right away. Uh, go ahead. Her name is Bella. And I'll let them pet her. But you just don't walk up and touch somebody's dog. Right. You you don't know if that dog you know, is going to bite you or that dog even wants you to touch him. Exactly. And, and the reason I say this, and don't, I, I, I'm not trying to piss anybody off, but there's a lot of people, you know, because you can get service vests and all that online now and, and just call it a service dog just so you can take your pet inside with you because you don't want to go in alone. Right. We got a lot of that going on, and it's ruining the people that actually need these service animals. Mm -hmm. You know, our veterans, um, people that's been to war and, and all that. And um, you just don't want to touch somebody's dog because you don't know if that, if that dog is trained or not because of that. You know, you, you can reach down and go to touch somebody's dog, and that dog's not professionally trained or this, that, and the other. You're going to end up getting bit. Exactly. That dog ain't, that, 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 you know? that dog don't know you. You you go, you go walking up and touching exactly. somebody's dog, and that's and that's lightweight disrespectful, period. I mean, the dude, I mean, number one, he going to come up to, he going to come up to you and pet your dog, and you was like, hey, bro, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, but, you know, don't pet my dog. And he's going to turn around and jump wrong with you. What's the matter with him? You know what I'm saying? And he going to turn around he going to turn around and like, "Oh, well if you No, 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 bro. This is like this is like, you know, if I don't want to be bothered with you or you shaking shaking my hand or or anything like that, man, and you're going to get and you're going to get mad well if it's none of your business. Number 1, it's none of your business. You know what I'm saying? I mean, if you would have turned around just like you said, and say, hey, it's a beautiful dog. Uh, you mind if I pet it? What's her name or his name? You know, spark a conversation. Don't just, you know, not to say that the dog is a property because, you know, the dog is more than a property to you. But still, that's my exactly. dog. That's my dog. That You know, ask me first. You know, that's that's just plain disrespect. Yeah, because like I said, if you ask, most of the time, I'm going to let you touch the dog. Right. You know, I'm going to let you pet her. I don't want to, I, I want a friendly dog, you know, because I do go into public places. Mm -hmm. I do go into customers and stuff with her. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and speaking of the conversation, and, and I'm sure you read a lot of the comments. Yeah. That, that post got a lot of, yeah. a lot of attention. It got a lot of comments. Um, I'm still getting comments on it. Uh, some good, some bad, you know, one in particular, uh, a gentleman made the thing that if I hold a placard, which is a handicap tag, and I have a service dog, then I need to keep my ass at home and collect the truck. I sh a check. I shouldn't be driving. Oh, my God. First off, let, let me address that. Go ahead. Let me address that. Go ahead. 
why should I, who is capable of working, sit at home and collect a check and be bored out of my mind and live off of a little tiny check that the government keeps cutting on our senior citizens and our veterans and stuff like that that can't work? When I'm able to supply for my family and make a decent living doing what I still do, all because I have PTSD and anxiety, and I was in a bad truck wreck in 2001, and I have a hip and, and leg issues and back issues, I can still drive. I can still do my job properly. I can still do my job safely. Like I said, I don't have the pressure. Nothing. I don't want to use this truck to drive, you know, kill nobody. I still love my job. I just got high anxiety. I don't like crowds, you know. My dog takes my attention off the anxiety. Um, my PTSD causes me nightmares. Um, my dog's trained to wake me up from my nightmares. So my heart don't race. You know, so she has a couple different aspects that she does. But my, my thing is, why can't I still do what I love to do all because I have a service animal and I have a handicap tag? You know, Crazy. That, that's my question. Why, why can't I do my job? Would you rather me sit at home and collect and check in and all these viewers pay for me to sit at home and do nothing when I'm capable of working? That's crazy. I, I want if Am you I right? if you you are definitely right. If you are able to if you still able body and mind and you can still control that truck, man, thirty years in the game, damn right, stay, damn right, come out here. You your your service dog, which is your partner, which is your partner in life. No, I like that, man. Don't let 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 this man stay in his lane. If he could continue doing it and drive that truck safe, ain't that's what it's all about? Driving the truck safe, right? Ain't that what it's all about? Exactly. You know, let this man. You know, people just people just be behind the keyboard just to, just just to be talking shit, just to be talking. You know. Exactly. You know, you you don't you, you know, don't know me from years, a can of paint. <laughs> I, I can still do my job safely and correctly. I still run over three thousand miles every week. In thirty years of driving, I've had one accident in two thousand and one, and it was not my fault. You know, um, and I'll tell you this situation real quick, and just to give you a little idea about my PTSD, mm -hmm. and, and for the young guys that's coming in this business. We, we are in the nation's deadliest, let me, let me say that again, we are in the deadliest career. These trucks are no joke. They can kill you. They can kill somebody else yep. quick in a second. 2001, I had me a log truck and I was running. Well, a boy on, it was about 10 o'clock at night, a boy on alcohol and drugs pulled out in front of me. And I, I tried to miss him. When I did, I rolled that truck twice and landed upside down. I broke my neck, my back. Oh my God. I died three times. They had to bring me back. Oh messed my, my hip God. up, my knee up. That boy did not make it. I have to live with that every day. I know it wasn't my fault. I, I've learned it. I, I went to doctors, psychiatrists, and, and dealt with it. It was years. You know, it took, it took years to get back in a truck. I'm not going to lie. So... People that don't know, that is not something you want to live with every day, whether it's your fault or not. It still affects you deeply when you take another person's life. And um, so with that being said, we are in the deadliest. And, and, and I tell drivers all the time when I talk to them, you might be the best driver in the world. I can't argue with you if you say you are. But all because you are does not mean it. all these billions of cars that you see daily are. Let me rephrase that. Let me put, say that again now. All because you are a professional, good driver. I don't care how long you've been driving, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, never had an accident. You could be one of the best drivers in the world, but that does not mean the person next to you is a good driver. Especially in today's time where people can't leave their damn cell phones alone. They can't drive a vehicle without texting because that text is so important. Or that phone call that they've got to answer because somebody's going to ask them what they're doing. You follow me? I follow you. 
all because you're a good driver does not mean the person around you is. Wow. I mean, I, I am so I am so thankful and so blessed to to even be on the phone with you, uh, uh, Mr. Laplant, uh, La, Mr. Laplant. I am I am so honored to 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 just to be on the phone with you and just listening to uh, listening to you talk, you know, talk your experience out here, man. Um, 30 man. Let me ask you this before we get up out of here. Um, and I, I'm going, I'm going back a little bit. I'm, I'm going back, uh, back up to where your miles is at. You say you got over three million miles. Have you been at knowledge? Uh, have you been at knowledge? Uh, at at a particular company of the of the miles that you got or no? Um, I, I've been an owner op for most of my career, so so no, I haven't. Um. Like I said, I grew up in a family-owned business, and I, I've been um, pretty much owner-op for most of my career. Um, I, I've worked for a couple companies. Um, I drive for a, a mid-sized company now, which I love. It's very well family-oriented. Um, it's not a gigantic company, but it's not a small company. Um, you know, uh, but for most part, I've been owner up, so so no, okay. I haven't. All right, now now I'm about to fast forward to uh to to back up the safety and 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 driving this trucks. We we got a lot of people. We we got a lot of new jacks that's coming into this game, and a lot and a lot of technology really really has changed the face of of trucking. You know, we got GPS, we got tablets, we got cell phones, we got a lot of stuff that can really, really distract us from driving. Now let me ask you this, because I talked to an old school driver and, you know, he feels some kind of way about these about these new jack drivers out here. Um what do you think? And this is I I I, I want your opinion on this. Do you think driving a okay. do you think driving a manual is is a hell of a lot better to keep a person focused on the road than driving the automatic? My opinion it, it, I'm old school and, and I, I love the 18 speeds, 13 speeds. Um, I, I'm recently in an automatic. Um, I'm not ashamed of it. Actually, my back and my leg feels a lot better. <laughs> um, I, I don't think so in my in my eyes. I, I don't think so. Um, because you, you, you really don't need to shift to stay focused. You just need to stay focused, man. Turn you on a little bit of music, you know, and, and just. If you watch your mirrors and you're driving a truck, I don't care whether it's automatic or manual. If you're doing your job properly and you're looking at your mirrors constantly to watch your surroundings and and to, to look at landscape, and I'm going to say this again: if you're if you're looking at your mirrors, watching your surroundings, and you're looking at your landscape, let me tell you why you look at landscapes and why you keep your eye, you know, your mind on focusing on things as you're going down the road. Okay. Okay, if you go down the road and you break down, okay, and you're and you're in the middle of nowhere, you break down. Mm -hmm. But you were too busy playing on your cell phone, Facebooking, Instagramming, YouTube, and whatever whatever these new drivers do, and you're not paying attention to your landscape. You break down and you're talking to the uh, road service people. Well, where are you at? Uh, I don't know. Well, what are you near? Well, I, I don't know. How, how long do you think you're going to sit on the side of the road waiting for them to find you? Because most of the road service people live in that area. So if you say, hey, I passed this barn that's got this big flag on it, and, and it's got signs on it, and um, there, there was a sign for this particular store or, or you know, um, this exit, I passed exit 89, um, they're going to know where you're at, so they're going to get to you a lot quicker. Am I correct? Yes, sir. Yes, you are. 
I mean, because the people that you call to help you are from that area. So if you give them landmarks, 80% of the time, they're going to know where you're at. So therefore, that, to answer your question, you can keep your mind busy without that stick shift, in my, in my opinion. All right. You know, paying attention to landmarks, mile markers. Uh, and, and, you know, enjoy the scenery, man. You're an over-the-road truck driver. You're getting paid to see the country. Enjoy God's beauty. Enjoy the scenery, the mountains, the sunset, the sunrise, you know, these historical buildings. Enjoy it when you're going down the road, drivers. Those are memories. Those can't be erased. That's something you can tell your future grandkids, your kids. Well, let me give you let me give you a bomb drop for that. You know that. Let me I gotta give you a bomb drop for that one. That that is what's up. That is what's up, man. Oh uh, man, Mr. La La Plante. La Plant. <laughs> Sorry for beating up your name, man. <laughs> Outful. Outful. Oh man, I, I wish I, I I wish Hey, at least you're pronouncing it half. <laughs> At least you're pronouncing it correct most well, of the time. Anyway. Well, you know, my name is LaShine, so that's that's my first name. So I got the love part right. <laughs> I just got to make sure I get the plant I right. <laughs> well, Mr. LaPlant, man, thank you. Thank you very, so very much for coming on and sharing your experience with me and and uh, and sharing, uh, you know, the incident. You know, if you guys see this, uh, see this young man with his uh, beautiful service dog, uh, he don't have no problem. Just ask him first. Just ask him, and maybe he might let you plant. I mean, uh, maybe he might let you pet him, but don't don't give him the side eye. You know what I'm saying? If 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 the dog is there, don't give him the side eye. And and for that young lady to to get smart with you, you know what I'm saying? Without even noticing that he had he he had the service tag on his uh, I mean, on your dog. You you know, ask first because I go into a lot of places and I see a lot of people bringing their pets in. That's that's not service, you know. That's not service animal, and I don't see nobody saying nothing to them. You know, taking them over there near the dog, uh, near, near the hot, hot dog thing and and uh, and uh, and uh, uh, drink fountains and all like that. Y'all don't say nothing to them, but yeah, you're gonna look at this man and 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 say something to him without even noticing the 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 service tag on them that's wrong that's wrong stop judging people you know what i'm saying stop judging people out here man that's that's all i gotta say mr i i, I want to add something if you don't if you don't mind Go ahead. i want to add one one thing real quick um for, for the drivers out here listening that do have animals whether it be a service animal or you know if you take your dog in somewhere you know keep in mind not only do you you want respect with your animal, but but keep in mind there was a young lady that commented on on that post. Some people do have allergies to dogs and, and cats and stuff. So if, if you're going to take your dog in public, at least have enough respect. If you want respect, at least have enough respect for other people. Keep your dog in, inside of a place on a tighter leash, you know, where he where he or she has to stay right next. to because you don't know if somebody does have allergies or if they got severe allergies mm -hmm. to allergic. So don't let your dog just go up and start sniffing people. That, also, you know, if, if you want the respect with your animal, at least give everybody else respect in that business because they might have an allergy to animals. And if that's the case, you know, keep your dog on a tight leash and just don't let your dog just go up to people in a public facility. That's what's up. That's what's up. Well, Mr. James LaPlante. Thank you very much for coming on, man. I really do appreciate it. Yo, you have any, you know, 30 years in the game. I, I'm, I'm going to have to bring you back. We, we we got much more to talk about, man. I'm going to have to bring you back. But as of right now, what what is, throughout your experience, throughout the 30 years, man, what, what advice do you have for some of these uh, new jazz that's coming up in this game, man? My, my biggest thing I'm going to say, man, and, and I got a Facebook group for our drivers, you know, for our, our younger generation coming up. My, my best advice, man, there is no, no stupid question. It, don't act like you know it all because I've been in it 30 years and I still learn something new every day. The day that I say I know everything about trucking, I need to get out of it because I'm an arrogant prick. 
You learn something new in this business every day, every day. Don't be afraid to ask for help. You know, talk talk to the old school guys, you know. Most of us still love to talk, and we'll be glad to help and pass the experience on and help you make a better career in the industry. Just, just my, my best advice is no question is a stupid question when it comes to making money and, and your safety out here. Well, that's what's up. That's that. That would be my best advice. That's and and my my last advice before we go, if you're in a truck stop, gentlemen or ladies, instead of having your phone filming somebody posting it on one of these pages mm-hmm. or somebody having issues backing up, get out the truck, put your phone down. Get out your truck and go help the person. You're, you're going to make their day, and you're probably going to teach them something. If they're having that much issue backing up, they're probably new in the game. Go help them. Pass the torch, man. Keep somebody. Instead of filming it, posting it, and making fun of somebody because they're having issues. About to give you a round of applause for that. Yeah, that's my advice. That is what's up. That is what's up. And I, I've been saying, and this is coming from a 30-year driver. I've been saying that ever since I've been in the game. You guys have a bad, bad, bad habit of, of whooping up your phone and trying to get somebody's uh, struggles and just sitting there in the truck. Look at that swift driver. Look at, the, look at that person came back. Look at this. Look at that. Man, and this coming from a 30-year driver, I've been saying the same thing. Get out. Help one another, and and just and and just just be nice, man. Well, thank you for thank you for coming on, man. I really do appreciate it. If you guys want to come on and chop it up with me, like Mister James Laplante, man, be hit me up in the Gmail or hit me up in the Messenger or hit me up in the DM. That's Lockout Men Podcast at gmail.com. Messenger, if you can find me on Facebook or Instagram, and hit me up in the DM, man. I appreciate you guys watching. If you like this video, definitely give it a likes. You know, give it a like. You know, like is free. And if you want to subscribe to the channel, just subscribe and share and hit that bell and that all button so that you can get all the videos, all the interviews, all the goodness of what Lockout Men Podcast bring you. I am your humble host, Lockout Men. I, my special guest, Mr. James LaPlante. Man, what, what, what can I say? What can I say, man? What can I say? I can't say no more. What I can do is bring in my cousin Ooh, so he can play us out. That's what he's going to do. You guys stay safe. You guys come back for another video. I'm right here. I'll come back at you guys later. Peace. Uh, Mr. LaPlante, you don't have to hang up yet, man. Just hold on until the music play out.